What is up guys, DJ Martini Midwest coming at you with another video from my channel. So today I'm going to show you how to get a heat sink put together for your SSD for a PS5 and then also how to get it in the PS5 as well. Uh, quick little video, some accessories that I think are definitely needed for the PS5 so you can get a little bit more memory in there and also you can make sure it's all working and in working order with your heatsink because they do say that you should put a heatsink on it. I've seen a lot of people not do that. It's going to be up to you, but I'd rather you know put one on than not put one on. So thank you guys for tuning in to DJ Martini Midwest. This is a quick tutorial video on how to get this done. I'm no professional or anything, so do this all at your own risk. Uh, and your own skill level guys i'm just showing you how i got it done and maybe it'll help you guys out there as well if you guys get uh any help from this guys please give me a thumbs up and let's get into the video guys so dj martini midwest reviews guys all right guys so let's talk about this so i did pick up and i will leave links for all the things i picked up a really simple heat sink that i picked up from a company uh just an aluna heat sinks basically what it was called and it was 13.99 Pretty inexpensive, not too bad. And I also picked up the Sabrent Rocket uh, for this particular. Now the specs are close to what they are supposed to be. They're supposed to be up to 5,500 uh, speeds, right speeds. And this one is right at 5,000. So it's pretty close. Uh, and I also got a good deal on it at $129. Uh, they run right now, they're about $149. So that's still pretty, pretty good for a one terabyte. Now, if you go a little cheaper with the 500, you can get those around $100 right now. Uh, and then everything else is in between that 129 to 180, you know, mark. Uh, you can you can pick up the Crucial, the XPG, the Samsung 980 Pro, or the WD Black SN850. Uh, those are all good, reasonable, uh, meet those specs, guys. And so they were really close, but I kind of wanted to test this one out, make sure it works too. So that'll be good for you guys to see if this one works. Uh, also, just to make sure that it works. So if everything is good to go, then we'll have no problems, guys. But all those other ones are really close. Uh, but I thought I'd save just a little bit of money and get this one. And it should be good uh, future proof for a while, guys. Uh, even though it's close to those specs of... Uh, 5,000 write speed. Uh, it's not quite the 5,500, but I think that's pretty good. They've done all kinds of videos now uh, testing those with uh, drives that are even less, like the uh, WD, uh, I think it's the WD SN750, and they've been able to get it done with write speeds of 3,600. So, and they really didn't see a lot of differences. So, um, just a little bit slower, but you know, it's just not future proofing your system for the future. But right now, everything is good to go. Uh, you definitely be able to use this for the next year or two, I believe, and you would have no problems. Uh, so, anyways, let's get back to the video. I'm going to show you how to get this heat sink done, and let's begin, guys. So, first of all, like I said, you're going to have all your pieces to your heat sink. Uh, you got some wipes there to keep everything clean, but everything is brand new, and I kind of wiped it down with a microfiber towel already, so we're good to go. Here's a little screwdriver that you'll get with that heat sink kit. And what we're going to start off with is just taking the plastics off the heat sink, and then you're going to go put that on the bottom side of your heat sink. Too. I'm going to match that up in there. All right, I got that in there pretty good. And then we're going to take that adhesive off as well. And then we're going to go and put this in. This is the Sabrent Rocket is the thing. And we're going to just place that carefully in there. Right there. So it's going to be covering one side. And then we're going to take our other side of our heat sink shields here. And we're gonna peel that off and we're gonna go ahead and put it on the top, right on the top of the... So now we know both sides are protected. It's gonna flatten that down in there for everything. And then we're gonna go ahead and take that off as well. And that one came off a lot easier. And so now we know everything is covered and then we're going to take our top and we're just going to slide that down on there like a sandwich here. All right, so that's going to be all sealed in there like that. And then it does come with the screws here. So we're going to grab those screws and they even give you one extra. And we're going to put one there one here guys 
and this is actually a magnetic screwdriver so I'll get it close and then so we have the holes there everything's lining up everything's sandwiched in there and we'll put one in so once you get one in you just line up all the others accordingly it's actually nice this is a has a little magnetic tip here so it makes it easy to hold onto those screws and I'm just going to screw all these in all right guys so we have this all done we have this in a heat sink this is the rocket uh, sovereign one terabyte um, memory card and we're going to go ahead and stick it in our playstation 5 yeah. i'm going to show you how to get that ssd inside your ps5 and i'm going to go start to finish here so we have the heat synced uh ps5 ssd right now which is a sovereign rocket mvme fourth gen and it is a uh one terabyte so uh, pretty good value and i'll be able to get it in here so let's go ahead and do it now to get these covers off it's not too hard you're just gonna so the side with the playstation logo i'm gonna lay down this lay it down forward i'm gonna pull and then i'm gonna push down a little bit there we go and i'm able to get this cover off right here and you know if you want to leave your front one on you can you don't really need to take that off all you really need to get is that panel off there and then we're going to turn this a little bit and this is where our ssd is going to go right here so a nice precision screwdriver kit is going to help you do this. Make sure you have the right uh, screwdriver head on there. It should be some sort of a Phillips. And you'll be able to get that screw out there on your cover here. Make sure you set stuff where you can find it. And then we're going to go ahead and take this cover off right here. And then we have that out. We'll set that aside right here. And I'm going to set the screw right next to it to keep everything organized. And then what we have here is... You can see how well this fits in here, here, and it fits in pretty good. Now there is a adjustment screw on there. Now if you didn't have that heat sink on there, uh, there is another screw down in here, and uh, I'm going to take it out just to show you. But there's an adjustment screw on for, for length, and it has a little spacer in it, and it looks just like this, guys. Uh, that spacer you would use if uh, the SSD you know was a certain size and it didn't have a heat sink on there but since we have the heat sink on there and it's in like a case we're not going to really need that so i'm going to go ahead and just screw this back in here so we know that it's in there if i need it in the future and i know it's there so now uh, since we don't need that i'm going to go ahead and just use this heat sink and i'm going to go and we're going to just place this in there nicely here push down and you felt it kind of click in and then it's just going to go down and this is going to fit just perfectly flush in there very very nicely and usually that screw would hold down the uh, ssd but since it's in the hint sink we're not going to really have to worry about that so um, so we can go ahead and put the top on there now and that'll kind of push it down as well and we're going to put this screw back in and it is really that easy guys I'm going to screw this all the way down here. That fit in there really, really good. It really was easy to just push down, push down in, and we were good to go. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn this just a little bit here. And this is how I'm going to put this on, guys. Like I said, I'm just going to match this up till it kind of goes down right there, line it up. And then I'm going to just push forward and press down. Boom. And that is on there, guys. And like I said, it is the same way to take that front panel off. You know, you're just going to pull on this corner right here a little bit, push down, and it's going to come off if you wanted to take that front side off. If you wanted to replace these, uh, which I might do another video on, because I do plan on putting some different stuff uh, that I picked up here in the future. So check out that video coming up really soon as well. So other than that, guys, uh, we're going to go ahead and go upstairs. I'm going to use my PS5 remote, which I think is also a great accessory to have for this. And we're going to be able to uh, go through and make sure we set up that SSD correct. And you also know if that rocket will work and we'll see what kind of specs it has as well when it checks that out as well now another accessory that i just kind of want to throw in here that might be a good one just to have is a usb hub 
and this is made for the PS5 right here. Um, it's from uh, not a company that I really know at all. It just says a USB hub basically. And it has the USB, it has three USB type twos and it has one USB type three and a USB type C as well. Now it has mixed reviews, um, but I did test it out and it was working. I was using it to hook up my Turtle Beach headphones. They are working. I will be doing a review on those in the future as well. Um, but those are working nicely. And also I was able to charge my controller with this. And some people say that works and some people say it doesn't work on this particular one. It was working and I was able to charge my controller. So, uh, so far so good on that. All right, guys, and I did have that plugged into the USB 3 to charge, so I don't know if that makes a difference, but that's what it was working for me, guys. So, all right, let's go. Uh, I'm going to go plug this in and get that SSD set up, and we'll wrap up this video up, guys. All right, guys, so I'm firing this up for the first time, guys, and once again, it's showing that that SSD, I need to format it. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And I'm doing this all with the PS5 remote control, which I think is a great accessory. So I'll leave that in the link in, uh, in description as well. Uh, so like I said, so we have that M.2 SSD storage. Um, it needs to be formatted. So we're going to go ahead and do that. But so far, so good working. And it is saying trying to install and the read speed is 5636 uh, which is good and like I said I think this is going to be a good uh, logical answer and it's cheaper on uh, the SSD so it is saying it's gonna work here it says the format is done and it is that simple guys it is all done ready to go and that ssd does work with the ps5 all right guys so let's wrap this all up i'm so glad you guys tuned in today for my ps5 video on the ssd upgrade also the heat sink put together um, i'm also going to list all the various uh, value um, ssds that you can put in there the sobrant uh, is the one i used and you know it's it worked very very good and i think it's going to be uh caught up to standards for a while so we should be good to go there uh, but there is some that are just very very close in price now these are all one terabyte if you go 500 gig you will save a little money because those are all running around like 129 from 80 dollars to 129 and then once you get up to one terabyte then you're going from 129 to 200 dollars there uh, right now for prices now i think all these in the future will definitely go down but right now you're looking at uh, almost 200 dollars to do a one terabyte uh, and that's why i'm listing some of these more value uh, uh, terabyte that do meet the standards there's especially the rock and i wanted to test that out to make sure it worked it is say up to speeds of five thousand and they say 5500 is where they want it now when i did uh, the speed test it said 56 so you know i was okay with that now i don't know if those are how accurate those are but that's what it is saying so it is going to work for this machine for now and i think it's pretty solid guys so that one was 129 uh, they go for 149 too um, a couple other ones that i wanted to go was the xpg is 147 the crucial uh p5 plus is 152 the also the wd black sn850 is 64 guys uh, 164 uh, so all those are very, very close, and those absolutely do meet the specs and are pretty well known. Uh, so they're still of value, but at the same time, they're more the way people would go. Uh, I kind of wanted to take a chance on the Sabra, and luckily everything worked out good. Now, another value one is the PNY XRR, uh, XLR8. That one's going for about 134 guys, so that's kind of a value, and they all should work just perfectly fine in your PS5 and you should be good to go. Now, I even heard they were doing tests on the WD Black SN750, which is only reading up to speeds of 3600 uh, for, the four, for the Gen 4, but they said it was still working and it was able to go ahead and work for the PS5. Although you're not really future proofing your PS5 by doing that. Now, it may work with games that are coming out right now, but maybe future games where it's gonna really need those higher read and write speeds 
uh, you might not be, like I said, future proofing your PS5 for the future. So it might work for a couple years, but then you might have to find yourself upgrading in the future, which might be okay because prices might be going down by then. Maybe they could be going up, who knows? But I think I'm pretty safe with the Sobrant uh, Rocket one terabyte because it did read all the way up to speeds of 5,000. So uh, I think I'm right in the middle there and we're good to go. So, all right guys, if this was helpful, give me a thumbs up. Other than that, I think I'll be talking to you guys later. I got more videos to come. I am going to change the uh, panels on this as well as soon as I get those in and uh, show you all the accessories that I have all together for my PS5 in one video as well, just to show them off and you know review them as well so thank you guys so much for tuning in it's been dj martini midwest reviews this has been a tutorial on how to get the heatsink together and also get it in the ps5 guys like i said i'm not a professional do this all at your own skill level and your own uh warning uh like i said i'm just showing you how i got it done and maybe it'll help you guys so thank you guys so much give me a like if it was helpful we'll talk to you guys later it's been dj martini midwest reviews